Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. This is a short video summarizing the effects different hormones have on the kidney. I've covered some of these hormones in a little more detail in other videos, so I'll leave links to those in the description box below. The kidney has millions of nephrons, and each nephron has a glomerulus and a renal tubule. The first part of the tubule is the proximal convoluted tubule, followed by the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct. Though the kidney itself has endocrine functions, there are hormones produced both by the kidney and elsewhere that can have effects on it. And we're going to talk about five important hormones. First up, angiotensin II, as a part of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Angiotensin II is stimulated in response to low arterial pressure, or as a part of tubuloglomerular feedback from the macula densa, or from increased sympathetic tone via the beta-1 receptors. Angiotensin II acts on the glomerulus, constricting the efferent arteriole, increasing the glomerular hydrostatic pressure, and hence the GFR and the filtration fraction. Despite the high volume of sodium being filtered, it acts on the proximal tubule, stimulating the sodium hydrogen exchanger. So it effectively increases sodium reabsorption and so regulates the GFR and maintains blood volume. So sodium is filtered, but it's reabsorbed later. Indirectly, it also increases aldosterone and the antidiuretic hormone. So second is aldosterone. Aldosterone is produced in response to a low blood volume via the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, and also when the serum potassium levels are high. It has receptors in the principal and the alpha intercalated cells of the late distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. On the principal cells, it stimulates sodium-potassium ATPase and the epithelial sodium channels. That increases sodium reabsorption and potassium secretion, and hence potassium excretion, which is why it is stimulated when the potassium levels in the blood are high. On the alpha intercalated cells, it increases hydrogen ATPase activity, so hydrogen ion secretion. So put together, aldosterone reabsorbs sodium and secretes potassium and hydrogen ions. Third is the antidiuretic hormone. Normally, the late DCT and collecting duct are impermeable to water. ADH stimulates the V2 receptor, and via CAMP, it creates aquaporins, which are channels for water to be reabsorbed. So ADH therefore controls concentration and dilution of urine. Because of this, when ADH reabsorbs water, the urea concentration in the medullary collecting duct rises. That encourages it to move into the interstitium through the urea transporters. So ADH contributes to maintenance of medullary hypertonicity, forming the cortical medullary osmotic gradient, which, like I talked about in my video on the countercurrent mechanism, is needed to concentrate urine. Fourth is the atrial natriuretic peptide. This is released from the atria of the heart when the atrial pressure is high. It's a natriuretic, so it increases glomerular filtration rate, but unlike angiotensin II, it doesn't increase sodium reabsorption. It inhibits the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, so there's reduced sodium reabsorption. So there's a loss of sodium in the urine, hence natriuresis. The fifth and the last one is the parathyroid hormone. PTH is released in response to three things, a low serum calcium level, high serum phosphate levels, or low vitamin D levels. So it increases serum calcium, reduces serum phosphate, and increases vitamin D synthesis. To do this, it has some effects on the kidney. In the early PCT, it reduces phosphate reabsorption 
and so reduces serum phosphate by increasing its excretion. In the distal tubule, it increases calcium reabsorption and so increases serum calcium levels. In the PCT, it also stimulates 1-alpha-hydroxylase, so increases vitamin D synthesis. And that is a summary of five important hormones that have their effects on the kidney. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.